The next thing we see in that scripture is this. Don't define your future or sources based on only one event. Don't define your sources or your future based on one event. It's like ministry. There are days that when you come to church, it's like nobody is coming to church. There are days that when you even come to church, it looks like that day some people didn't, a lot of people didn't come to church. That doesn't mean the church has come to an end. Hallelujah. It's a stage. It's a stage. The same way in your life, you must not define your level of success based on just one event in your life. Don't assume that that thing you have gone through, even, 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 even let's say you write an exam and you do so well, don't assume that because you have passed that exam, you have become successful in your life. You will make the biggest mistake. Because success is actually a cumulative effect of series of successes life sources is actually a cumulative effect of series of what life sources so don't use one event to judge yourself don't even assume that because you did this thing well oh you have you you, you are going to be successful paul made a very profound statement he says therefore I lay aside everything. Let us lay aside everything that easily what? And snare us. So that we can run the race. And then later on, he also says something. He says, I count all, all that I have achieved as what? Nothing. Another place, he said, I count it as dunk. Do you know dunk? Dunk means toilet. He says, my sources, I even count it as toilet. So that I can strive to win more medals. The same way, if you are going to be successful, don't be, be, be deceived by the past successes nor the past failures. Don't use only those past successes and past failures as a hallmark of your success. If you are going to be successful, every day must be lived as a new day. Did you hear what I've said? I said, if you are going to be successful, every day must be lived as what? As a new day. The same way, don't assume that because you were righteous yesterday, you cannot live anyhow today. And assume that because I did well yesterday, God is going to use that against what I, my, my, the life I am living. No, it doesn't happen like that. Live every day as a new day. Live every day as what? As a new day. Live every day as a new day. The next thing, I want to move quickly now. The next thing is this. We must see from God's perspective in order to see the bigger picture. We must see from what? God's perspective in order to see from the bigger picture. If I say we must see uh, from God's perspective, it means that we must see things how God sees things. Hallelujah. Because after all, who is going to answer the prayers? So if you will see God's, from God's perspective, your prayers will be easily answered. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to do what? And as a matter of fact, faith is seen from God's perspective. Do you understand? Faith is seen from what? So what the Bible is saying is that without faith, which means without seeing from God's perspective, you can't please Him. For example, if you come to my house and I do my things in a certain way, okay, and you come to my house and you are not looking at things from my perspective, you may be behaving in a way that is irritating me and you don't yet know. So the Bible is saying that for us to please God, we must see the way he sees. So that we may not be doing things that are actually irritating him without we even knowing. If you look at that story, Jesus said, why are you people? He said, you fools. Why did he describe them as fools? Because they were looking at it from human perspective, not from God's perspective. 
And if we are going to see from God's perspective, what we have to do, number one, is know his word concerning your life. Know his word concerning what? Your, your life. And before, you know, in the word of God, we have the logos uh, and the rhema. The rhema is what God reveals. So, for example, if I come and I say, the Lord has laid it on my heart that you are going to do this job. It means that is rhema. But before the rhema comes, there is what we call the logos. Logos or logo or whatever. Logos, which is the written word of God. And you must know the written word of God. Because when Jesus was going to explain to them the event of the bigger picture, he did not use the rhema. He used what? The logos. So you must read the word of God concerning your life. If what is God saying concerning your marriage? What did God say concerning marriage? What did God say concerning prosperity? It's not what everybody is saying. You know. It's not sometimes even what the pastor is saying. It's what God is saying. Because every human being can get it wrong. Because for example, if you are walking by these two disciples of Christ, you will think they know it all, two of us. Because they were actually disciples who have walked with Christ. So people will assume that they had more knowledge than anybody. But even though they've walked with Christ, they did not know it all. And the only way Christ could open their eyes was to take them back into what? The word. So you see what Jesus said. And the Bible says, beginning from the prophet, he then began to teach them all. Not some, but what? Oh, that is why you can never see the bigger picture if you don't have your money devotion, you don't have a reading habit, you don't hear consistently God's word. You cannot see the bigger picture. The difference between they and Christ was in the knowledge of the word. The difference between what? They and Christ, these two disciples and Jesus Christ was the knowledge of what of the word it was the deep knowledge that jesus had in the word of god that he used to explain the event to them so the same way the deeper you have knowledge the deeper your knowledge of god's word the better your understanding of your environment and the things that are happening to you hallelujah so if you don't spend time to read the word of god and to know the mind of God concerning what you are going through and concerning your life. People will tell you things that you will believe, which is actually opposite what God is saying. Hallelujah. A lot of people have believed men and have done terrible mistakes just because they did not take time to read what God has said concerning you. Every situation you are going through in your life, you must go into God's word and find out what God is saying about it. Hallelujah. If you are going through a marriage situation, go into God's word. Go and look for every scripture about marriage in the whole Bible. Go and if you want, you, you are looking for God to prosper you. Go and read every scripture concerning finances in the Bible. That is God's mind concerning finances. If you are looking for health, Go and read every scripture in the scripture concerning health. And stand on it and talk to God. And see whether he will not speak. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the next thing you see. The next thing you see in that scripture. Is this. The bigger picture is made up of smaller pictures. And to understand completely, we must have all the pictures. The bigger picture is made up of smaller pictures. And to understand completely, we must have all the pictures, all the other pictures. That is verse 25. If you read verse 25, it says very soon. He says, Then he said unto them, O ye fool, ought not slow of heart to believe all that the prophet has spoken. All that the prophets, plural, all that the prophets, the thing is plural. Do you understand? 
all that the prophets have spoken you must not believe what the prophet has said but all that the prophets have said because you know the bible says we see in what in parts peter said we see in parts and we all see through a darkening glass so it means that all the prophets they see different perspectives do you understand so they may see one part of your life but it's not all that's why when the prophet say you are going to die it's one part all of us will die maybe he saw your death in 70 years to come hallelujah Amen. so you must not be moved by that you cancel it in the name of jesus so the bible says so for us to be successful we must see all that the prophet have written you must see all you must not look at only one so when you are going to school and there is problem today i look back at my life and i thank god for something that god has done for me which i never thought it was a blessing at that time when we were growing up our parents did everything to make sure we were comfortable one thing that i observe in the morning is that when we are going to school sometimes what you have is not too much and apart from that when you are going to school in the morning there is traffic and i used to go to school around somewhere at beka st thomas and from la paz to st thomas you know there used to be heavy traffic from that place so we, we observe that when we sit in the car in the trotro to go to school sometimes we will sit in the trotto and people who are walking will walk past the trotto to get to a beckham before we get there so we sat and said myself and my senior brother we said ah then why don't we use the transport money to supplement our food money and jog to school so we started learning how to jog so in the morning we jog from la paz to uh, school every day and we would time one trotto and we will see how the trotto is moving and we will jog past excuse me we will jog past the trotto and go to school and so it became a habit of every day doing what jogging now i have come to understand that perhaps that jogging when i was young has built has helped me to build a strong heart do you understand yes because i observed that it has helped me to build a very good heart because when i check my blood pressure by the grace of god very good and i observe i later link that also to the jogging when we were doing when we were young what used to be an obstacle has been able to build an athletic out of us the bigger picture the bigger picture I remember when we were young there were a lot of things that we have gone through and I have come to observe that all those little things were working for my good I have shared with you some time ago that I used to be an assistant of a group and when I used to be the assistant we would go to a meeting and my senior my 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 boss or the the senior pastor or whoever would just hand over his note to me and say oh today i want you to lead and the time he's telling me i want you to lead is during the initial intercession what do you do you would have easily got angry am i right oh pastor what kind of this life is that you you taught us planning and preparation now look at what you are doing to us you should have given us time to plan and then he just calls me like that and 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 i just take the paper without complaining and go back like that complaining what's their praying i'm going through 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 by the time they say amen i sit down and say oh, god bless you they call me to the brother oh, god bless you for coming today and then i leave the class like nothing happened but i observed that all those things were part of the training all those things were part of what the training when god was watching david fight lion and if you were standing there what would you have told god what do you think god was wicked 
to allow a 16 year old boy to be attacked by what? And a bear. But God knew that in Goliath was a liar and what? And if he did not allow him to go through that phase of his life, there was no way he would have fought Goliath. All the people ran away because none has fought a lion and a bear before. All the situations you are going through is directly related to where God is taking you to. Because nobody travels on the Kaswa road and end up in the north. It's not possible. Every road you are traveling on has something to do with your destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And the next thing we look at, the next thing we will look at quickly as we bring um, today's meeting to a close is this. You cannot enter your glory without will. You cannot enter your glory without being willing to pay the price. You cannot enter what? Your glory without being willing to pay what? Your price. Tell somebody there is a price. For everything you want, there is a price. But the question is, are you willing to pay the price? Hallelujah. There is a price for everything in this world. There is a price for everything you want in this world. There is a price. But the problem is that a lot of people want to have things they have not paid for. The difference between a thief and a client is payment. True of us. The thief is one who wants to take what he has no worth. So there are some people who are spiritual thieves. They want the blessing they have not invested into. And there is no way you can succeed. One of the problems of Africa is that we are looking for things we have not paid for. We want to, to have the things we, have no, we are not willing to pay for. The nations that have developed, they have paid their price by investing in some things and deferring pleasure for a time. Everything you are looking for, there is a price to pay for it. The question is, are you willing to pay the price? Jesus said, if I am going to enter my glory. So as a matter of fact, Jesus was not only looking at saving mankind. He was also looking at entering his own world. So that the issue of Jesus dying on the cross was not only for our sin, but it was for him himself also. It was for him to enter what? His glory. So you must be ready to pay the price for what you want. It's like being an entrepreneur. I, I, I hear uh, the way sometimes on radio, they say, oh, everybody, you want to be an entrepreneur. There's a price. You must learn how to, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you must learn how to wake up without knowing where the salary will come from. You must learn how to think outside the box. If we are going to be third, we want to, if you are going to be a first world nation, there is a price. If you are going to become a boss, there is a price. There is a price for everything. That is why Jesus said, whosoever will follow me must first of all do what? Lay down his life and do what? Pick up the cross and do what? He says, everybody who must follow me must first what? Count the cost. So there is what? Counting of course. That is why sometimes when we are doing altar call, I think we must make the people sit there and analyze whether they are ready to give their life to Christ. It should not just be by persuading them. Because there is a cost to what they are doing. There is a cost to everything. Do you want to become a good student? Do you want to go to the university? There is a cost. You cannot be watching television 24 hours and think you will be successful. 
all of you here who watch television do you know that when you watch television for more than 12 hours it kills two percent of your brain cells are you aware that's what i a research i was i was reading that the, too much television especially if it has to do with uh, telenovela which does not stimulate your brain to think but only excite you you are becoming more stupid hallelujah yeah. and then there is a program called kunkumbaja is it true yeah. i was surprised they say it's an indian program and i, I was surprised i saw they were speaking i said have we become so stupid and you see there is a price so do you know do you know you see you we, we don't understand we don't understand how the world thinks so we follow things blindly i'm telling you out of those films they are showing us they are teaching us their culture they are teaching us their way of dressing soon they will teach us their gods true or false what are you feeding your, yourself there is a price Young people, you can never be a first class student by watching television. You cannot. You cannot. You can never be a first class student by following what third class students do. Even as everybody here, I want you to sit down and ask yourself, will you like to be among the top 20 people in any field you find yourself so for example shepherd theophilus in transportation will you like to be among the 12 top 20 transport owners in ghana if you want to the question is how and are you ready to pay the price if trailblazers want to be among the top 20 churches in ghana what is the price if you want to be shepherd gladys you want to be the among the top 20 designers or centers or fashion designers in ghana the question is what is the price and it's possible and you know what i have observed this this week i was learning and you know what i have observed what i observed is that it has been observed and researched that the 20 people the top 20 people in any field on earth invest three percent of their income in themselves through education books research and seminars do you hear that when that was the last time you read a book on transportation you can't even remember when was the last time you got a book or youtube on fashion if you want to be among the top you must do what the top people want do when you go to sunday school you will see their shepherd teaching them do as i do i do like this you must learn how to invest three percent of your income in books back into your life if you are a school boy and you are sitting here don't always expect your parents to buy books for you do you hear what i'm saying don't be ready to put some of your money down the way you can use it to buy biscuit toffee and units for your phone you should be able to use some for buying books you must be able to invest in yourself and if you see the bigger picture you will be ready to do that hallelujah if you look at the bigger picture you'll be ready to invest in yourself my prayer is that these things that we have shared from tonight you will know may god help you to see the bigger picture may god help you to see from god's perspective we are going to look at how to see the bigger things that we can do to see the bigger picture and things that prevents us from seeing the bigger picture. God bless you. Amen.